After a year in operation and countless requests, Framework has released their first new expansion card and given us a 2.5 gigabit ethernet card. But with a price tag of nearly $50 delivered, is it worth the cost? I'll compare it to some cheaper alternatives in both form and function to find out. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and this video is going to be about more than just the framework Ethernet expansion card. But like always, I went deep into testing, ran into some issues that I of course had to try to fix, but ultimately didn't have time to figure out. So today we're just going to discuss the framework Ethernet card, its form, function, and performance on both Windows and Linux. But Let's start by taking a look at the Ethernet card, which is actually more like part expansion card, part dongle, as when it's inserted, it sticks out of the side of the laptop by 17 and a half millimeters. It also doesn't fit flush with the bottom of the laptop by about two millimeters. However, it isn't fat enough to hit the desktop. Instead of the matching anodized aluminum case like all the rest of the expansion cards, the housing is injected molded semi-transparent plastic. The card uses a Realtek 8156B network interface controller and was plug and play compatible with Windows 10 and 11. I also tested on three different Linux distros and it worked and appeared to be connected at 2.5 gigabits, but in practical use, I ran into a little, couple of little problems that are probably Linux problems, but I'll get into that in a bit. For performance testing, I picked up a couple of Ethernet dongles for comparison. I got the cheapest 2.5 gigabit USB Ethernet adapter I could find on Amazon. This Cable Matters dongle, which turns out uses the same real technique, but only cost $28 delivered, so almost half the price of the framework adapter. And I picked up this Ugreen Gigabit dongle for about 15 bucks delivered. I'll explain why I'm testing against a Gigabit NIC when I get to it. The test setup is of course my framework laptop in which I have my 11th gen 1165 G7 mainboard installed and I'm running the latest versions of Windows 11 22H2 and Windows 10 21H1 which is plugged into my Zyxel multi gigabit switch. This switch has 8 gigabit ports and 4 multi gig ports capable of speeds up to 10 gigabit. Port 9 on the switch is connected to my gateway at 2.5 gigabits indicated by the light blue LED. LED. Port 10 is the framework, again light blue indicates 2.5 gigabit per second connection, and port 11 is my Unraid server on a 10 gigabit connection indicated by the dark blue LED. To start, I tested both Windows 10 and 11. For both Windows versions, the card was completely plug and play. I just slid it in and it showed up in the device manager with Realtek drivers installed. An important note here, in both 10 and 11, Windows installs an older version of the driver than is currently available on the Realtek product page. But word of warning, just go with the version Windows uses as when I updated the drivers on Windows 10, it killed the NIC speeds by up to 93%. For a baseline, I started with an internet speed test using Wi-Fi on my Wi-Fi 6 network, and I averaged 612 megabits down and 209 up. Now, I do have a gigabit plus internet plan with 1.5 gigabit down and 250 megabit up speeds, but these are the typical Wi-Fi speeds I get. Switching to the framework card and wired in, the download speeds nearly maxed out my internet at 1400 megabits per second down and 235 up. Using the Cable Matters 2.5 gigabit dongle and the average speeds were exactly the same as the framework card. Using the Ugreen 1 gigabit dongle, we have download speeds of just under a gigabit at 839 megabits and upload speeds are still at 235 megabits. Now, if you have greater than gigabit internet speeds, then having a 2.5 gigabit NIC is a good thing and just on price to performance, the cheaper Cable Matters dongle is the better value here. But in reality, most people don't even have gigabit internet. The fastest I could get until just this year was 125 megabit down, 10 megabit up. So if that's the case, the best value is the $15 gigabit dongle. Because as I'll demonstrate, if I plug my 2.5 gigabit framework ethernet card into a gigabit port, now I get the same 800 megabit download speeds. 
Your speeds are only as good as the slowest link in your network, so a 2.5 gigabit NIC isn't going to make your gigabit LAN faster. For most people, connecting to the internet is all connections like this are for, but for the rest of us who have high speed local networks to access, the faster the better. So let's take a look at some file transfer speeds. For this test, I'm transferring about 366 gigabytes of files, varying in size from one megabyte to 100 gigabytes to an NVMe cache pool on my Unraid server. And using the framework card, we had average transfer speeds of 283 megabytes per second or about 2.26 gigabits per second, which the Cable Matters 2.5 gigabit dongle matched exactly, while the Ugreen 1 gigabit dongle was all over the place in this test, but averaged 95 megabytes or 0.76 gigabits per second. Transferring files with the framework card plugged into a gigabit port, I actually got much more consistent and steady file transfer speeds of 113 megabytes per second, and the transfer was about 20% faster. However, it's still a 220% price increase. That was Windows. Now let's look at the performance on Linux. And for these tests, I selected three distros to represent most distros, Fedora, Pop! OS, and Manjaro all of which use a kernel version that incorporates the Realtek drivers for this NIC. Starting again with wired internet speeds, all three of the distros were able to match the Windows 11 and 10 speeds. However, when we get to the file transfer speeds, we see a little fall off with Pop! OS and Fedora falling behind the Arch-based Manjaro and Windows by about 30 megabytes per second. These speeds were the same using the OS file managers and command line. I also verified the results by running an iperf bandwidth test between the clients on the laptop and an Ubuntu VM running on my server, and both Pop! OS and Fedora got TCP speeds of up to 2.16 gigabits per second, while Manjaro was faster at 2.28 gigabits per second. Now, I have ideas why these speeds are slower, and I did explore some common bandwidth and packet restriction fixes I'm familiar with to no avail. I just don't really have time to explore and troubleshoot the problems further, and really the speeds weren't horribly slower, so while I'm sure someone will probably provide a very simple solution, in a respectful manner in the comments of this video. For now, I'll just say results may vary depending on the distro you use, but probably not by much. That covers function, let's discuss form. The first aspect is of course the size, which I'm actually okay with. In fact, I started designing an ethernet expansion card and I quickly figured out that I couldn't fit an RJ45 port with all the electronics while maintaining the required trace densities needed for function without EMI or crosstalk problems into something the size of an expansion card. Now, if I'm playing devil's advocate, Framework is a small company, but definitely much larger and more skilled than me, so I figured they can come up with something better than what I could. I mean, there are laptops going back a decade or more with crazy folding or transforming ethernet ports after all. Well, now back to the more pragmatic me, none of those solutions were ever really resilient, and some were just bad. Again, I'm okay with the size, especially since it still fits into my sleeve with the ethernet card installed, link in the description below. Now, what I don't like, again, subjective, is the see-through injected molded plastic. Whatever the spin marketing puts on it, it just looks and feels cheap to me. If I have to have something sticking out of the side of my laptop like this, it'd be nice if it matched like the anodized aluminum cases of all the other expansion cards, especially at the cost of this thing. Now, of course, nobody really sees this. It's not like I'm jacking into the network at my local coffee shop. I only use this when I'm actually at my desk or if I travel because I don't use open Wi-Fi at hotels to access anything remotely sensitive, but I still have to look at it. And it looks cheap. So it has the same hardware and performs exactly the same as the much cheaper dongle. It's expensive, but looks cheap. What are the pros of this thing? Well, I can think of two. I already mentioned while installed, it fits in my sleeve, so it's definitely more portable. If you're taking your laptop back and forth to work where you jack into the LAN, then this could be a good solution, 
But again, for the price, especially if you're just on a gigabit connection, you can buy two or more of these for cheaper and just leave it plugged into the ethernet cable on each of your desks. To be honest, I use a $35 hub that has HDMI, USB, power delivery, and ethernet. It's bigger, but it stays on my desk, which is the only place I use a wired connection anyway. The other pro is it provides a much more solid connection. You move your laptop or hit the cable, you'll disconnect these dongles easily. And depending on what you're working on, that could be bad. The expansion card is locked into the laptop's expansion bay and provides a secure connection for the ethernet cable. So it'd take a lot to yank it out or you can just make your dongle more secure with a simple expansion card USB-C clamp. I designed this for my USB-C hub because it would pull out sometimes when I moved or spun the laptop and I'd lose everything, not just the network connectivity. If you're interested in how I designed and made this, I'll be posting a video on my Patreon shortly along with the CAD files. But basically, this gives me a secure connection for pretty much any USB-C cable or dongle, but I just gave you a couple of pros and then shot them down. Kind of lame, I know, but the one undeniable reason for this framework Ethernet expansion card's existence is because people ask for it. Like immediately, as soon as Framework launched with its expansion card selection, people started asking for an Ethernet card. It was the most requested card, and in just over a year, Framework produced it, and it immediately sold out. So there was a need for a product, Framework filled that need, and customers were happy. So it doesn't matter if I or anyone else thinks it's overpriced or ugly. It's a niche product from a niche company for a niche customer base so it comes with a niche price tag and the customer base that wants to see framework succeed has no problem with that now to be fair i'm pretty sure cable matters is also a small us based company that in my experience makes pretty good products so for the rest of you who are just looking for the best value then either of these solutions will work and definitely don't spend the extra money if you're just plugging into a gigabit or below network. You don't need to spend more than 20 bucks for that. Again, links to all the products I used in the video are in the description below. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments. And as always, consider hitting that like and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.